Good afternoon. Uh, I am uh, Warren Hogue, IPI's Senior Advisor for External Relations, and I'm happy to welcome you to this SRSG event featuring Parfait Onanga Anyanga, Special Representative of the Secretary General and Head of the UN Operation in Burundi, known as Banub. We started this SRSG series in 2006, and it's one of my favorite activities of IPI because it brings people from posts far from UN headquarters with real firsthand on the ground eyewitness experience into contact with the diplomatic and policy community here in New York. Being a one-time foreign correspondent for the New York Times, I consider these reports of the SRSG's dispatches from the front. And some of the countries that the series has focused on have been places of staggering challenges for the UN, like Liberia, Syria, the Central African Republic and Chad, Sudan, the Democratic Republic of Congo, the Palestinian territories, Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Cote d'Ivoire, and today, Burundi. Indeed, we had Parfait's predecessor in Burundi, Karen Langren, here in July, and a week ago today, our guest was Bert Kenders, SRSG in Cote d'Ivoire. And we had previously had his predecessor, Choi Jung-in, as a participant in the SRSG series. Our final SRSG to appear here last year, Martin Kobler, was the third SRSG for Iraq to speak at IPI. So as I said last week in introducing Bert Kenders, I am pleased to see these indications that SRSGs consider it part of their responsibility now to appear at IPI and participate uh, in our series. Um, I hope this series serves the SRSGs well. I know it provides us in New York with an invaluable opportunity to enrich our understanding of the UN's work in the field. Parfait Onanga was named to the post by the Secretary General in June and took up his duties in Bujumbura in August. You have his full biography in your papers. He is a familiar figure in this community because over the past decade, he has served in a number of highly visible positions working for the Deputy Secretary General and Presidents of the General Assembly. His fingerprints are on a lot of the initiatives and reforms that the under UN has undertaken during that period, including the Peace Building Commission, which figures prominently in his new assignment, since Burundi was one of the first two countries to go onto the agenda of the Commission. Burundi has made significant strides forward in recent years, but as a consequence, it's found itself in a tantalizingly difficult place. Since it is no longer considered a humanitarian emergency, it has risked falling off donors' agendas, and that at a time when donors' support is key for the country to consolidate its peace-building achievements through economic growth and job creation. It addressed that need directly in October, first holding a meeting here at IPI on poverty reduction and peace building, co-hosted by IPI and the permanent missions of Burundi and of Switzerland, and featuring the country's foreign minister, Laurent Cavacure. Then at the end of the month, it held a much larger two-day meeting in Geneva of its development partners that resulted in more than $2 billion in commitments to accelerate the country's development progress, poverty reduction, and creation of a dynamic private sector. On that last point, IPI research fellow Arthur Boutelis, himself a former civilian peacekeeper in Burundi, wrote a piece for our website publication, The Global Observatory, that noted that a consortium of foreign investors announced that this year it will begin construction of an $80 million shopping complex in Bujumbura, an apparent vote of confidence in the country's future from international business. Parfait, as I mentioned, your predecessor, Karen Lundgren, was here in July, just two weeks after Burundi celebrated its 50th anniversary. And she said, Burundi is the place to watch, and this is the time to watch it. So thanks for coming here so soon into your new job and helping us keep an informed eye trained 
on Burundi. Parfait, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Warren. Thank you for a warm welcome and uh, the kind words. Um, I came this time uh, to New York to present to the Security Council the latest um, report of the Secretary General on the situation in, in Burundi. As uh, Warren just said, I took up my new job in um, August last year. And while I'm the special representative of the Secretary General in Burundi, I'm far from being an expert on Burundi. <laughs> and uh, as I speak, I'm very humbled to see in this room uh, so many of uh, um, our colleagues who have spent an immense amount of time working in and on Burundi and um, showing how long and how engaged the UN has been in this uh, country. I'm glad to say that um, I'm grateful to my boss. He sent me to Burundi at a time when the country is uh, definitely on the, on the rise. Um, so it makes my task a bit uh, easier. Uh, this is not to say that there are no challenges um, still in Burundi. We have arrived at a time when <clears throat> the UN, um, the UN's engagement in Burundi over the past uh, 10 years and, and plus, um, um, and um, I should even talk about two decades, uh, starting the most recent one, starting with the um, assassination in 1993 of the first elected um, uh, Hutu president, um, um, Mr. Melchior Dandai, which, sparked, which started um, a series of, uh, of, of killings and um, um, some would say genocide, um, of killings of a genocidal kind of uh, nature. Um, and which really uh, put Burundi on the brink of, of total collapse. Um, today's Burundi <coughs> is, of course, a very uh, different place. I have come to discover a country um, that is of uh, unique beauty, a country of um, people of extraordinary resilience and courage, um, upon which history has shed a very heavy cast, um, full of um, hatred, full of crimes, and untold misery. And um, it is my <laughs> Um, a view that um, what we're seeing today, and especially since uh, the signing of the Arusha Accord in um, 2000, is, um, is a, new big, a new Burundi in the making. It's a new Burundi, a Burundi, I believe, that has um, gone through his past, realized that it was not definitely the path to follow, and decided quite uh, courageously to come to some difficult agreement, um, basically to share power um, along ethnical lines and, and political ones. Uh, understand that um, for over 40 years, 
in this uh, tiny country, overpopulated, only um, second to Rwanda in terms of uh, population density. Um, citizens are being going at each other's throats on the basis of um, ethnicity, which, by the way, some experts would say is simply another uh, fiction. There is no serious ground to suggest that there are really differences between these, you know, Tutsis and Hutus in, in, in Burundi, as it might be the case also for Rwanda. But the reality is these differences have been um, over-politicized and have led the country to go through a cycle of um, um, violence, massacres, simply because the other was <clears throat> consider the enemy. So in 2000, they decided that enough was enough. And to see, to understand um, where we are today, you have to give credit to the people of Burundi and the political leadership in Burundi. But also to the extraordinary support they've received so far and they continue to receive from the international community the United Nations, the OAU at the time, the AU today, um, the European Union. All partners have been extremely um, close to Burundi. And some would say that the level of support that Burundi is receiving is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, way too high um, compared to the size of the country, that they don't, they don't deserve so much interest um, from the international community. And, and I think, of course, I don't share that view. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> since 2000, um, the political leadership in Burundi, with assistance of partners that I just mentioned, agreed to um, a power sharing arrangement, um, whereas political parties from Hutu and Tutsi obedience will be having, uh, the majority Hutu will be having in a government, for example, 60% of the cabinet uh, positions, whereas the Tutsis will be having 40%. Uh, a split 50 50 in the army, um, um, a fleet, uh, a, a, a 60 40 in the police. And basically, agreeing to share power um, and leadership positions um, in all the key institutions of the nation. Um, some may say this as an expedient, because actually, uh, when I, I first discussed this matter with the um, external relations minister, Minister Kabakure, who, um, whom you just mentioned, uh, Warren, he called that agreement a miracle. And I think we should take it as is. And it's not magic, it has nothing to do with um, mathematics. Because when 85% uh, or so of the population um, agrees to share almost on a par with the other side, the other part, the other uh, um, uh, component of the, so of, of the society, then um, it goes beyond um, um, what would be seen as a fair share, a fair um, deal. Uh, but it tells a lot about the vision and the um, um, understanding of this, uh, this country that um, um, it was about time they reached agreement um, on um, how to settle their political differences. And this is holding so, so far. Um, we have seen um, um, two successful, quite uh, consecutive elections, 2005, 2010. Although, <clears throat> when it comes to um, 
the political landscape today, the country is still um, affected by the boycott of the 2010 um, elections, where, as you may be aware, while the international community and all those who provided support to Burundi in organizing these elections agreed that overall the elections were rather fair and properly organized. A number of uh, um, opposition parties decided that this was not the case. Um, after the first round of communal uh, elections, where they actually um, um, put forward a, um, a weaker showing as uh, 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 than expected, they decided that these elections were rigged and therefore decided to quit. And to this day, uh, Burundi is still paying the price for um, that boycott. Um, ever since I've, um, I've um, um, started my, my work in Burundi, um, I've, I've, I've been engaged in, um, in very um, um, serious conversations with all the uh, political uh, leadership. Today, we have um, uh, growingly um, confident, and I must say, with the risk of being authoritative, uh, the, um, the current um, uh, government led by the CNDD FDD is almost leading without um, um, opposition. They hold uh, the majority of the positions in the, in the, in the parliament with the uh, nominal, I should say, you pronoun and um, um, FNL um, uh, uh, MPs. And this has a deeper consequence on the country's um, um, democratic process. Because what we are seeing today is the absence of the opposition in the parliament has led the current um, uh, government to use its majority in the parliament to move a number of uh, um, draft laws um, which, if they were to be passed the way they are, um, they have been submitted by the government, uh, may um, lead to a further shrinking of the political space for um, the opposition, um, and, but also for the civil society and for um, um, uh, the media. And um, we have had a, um, um, to discuss these issues with um, both sides. Today, the major risk for the, um, the ruling party is not to lose the elections, the next uh, 2015 elections. I think they have, uh, they have grown to, to, to be um, uh, the dominant force, political force in the country. I think it's fair to say that uh, should any elections be organized today, uh, they will be in a position to, to win, uh, to have a clean win. Um, Therefore, the, the danger for them <clears throat> would be to go to the elections alone. Because if we were to see again um, a boycott of the kind that uh, happened in, to, in 2010, then it would uh, really strike a big blow to Burundi's um, a political, um, you know, very kind of uh, young uh, political uh, um, uh, experience. So we've been talking to uh, the opposition and uh, trying to uh, sensitize them on the, the need for them not to quit, to stay the course. Uh, because beyond um, accessing to power and controlling power, 
the opposition in many countries, and especially in uh, what could be seen as young democracies, has a responsibility, an historical responsibility, to ensure that they are there, they are present, and that their voice and the voice of the voiceless, those who are not represented by the majority, is heard. And it would make such a difference for them to be there and to have this, um, uh, uh, this debate where uh, critical uh, laws are being um, discussed in the parliament. It would have been better for them to be in the room uh, rather than um, uh, crying from the um, sideways. So this is where um, um, we are at the moment uh, with a situation where, unfortunately, uh, dialogue between the opposition and the government is, uh, is also shrinking, is um, close to uh, non-existent. Before leaving, I, I had a chance to talk with the interior minister and share with him the, our intention to organize um, at the end of February an important workshop um, where we plan to bring together the opposition, the government, and talking about the opposition, including those leaders who are currently in exile. And I was pleased to see that for the pre from the president to the interior minister to the, to the entire leadership, um, in, um, in Burundi. They are open and ready to support this exercise and, and therefore uh, we look forward to it. And for the opposition, it's a welcome initiative uh, because they are not in a position to uh, agree to participate in the formal um, uh, mechanisms that exist, political forums that exist. Um, because they have and continue to consider this government as um, illegitimate. And therefore, having the UN there on the ground, um, inviting and, and bringing together, convening, using its convening power to bring together all the actors um, is definitely um, a, a, an asset um, in, in the process for uh, strengthening um, um, Burundi's uh, um, democratic experience. I mean, it's, it remains to be said that um, um, fortunately, through dialogue and through this very uh, strenuous and difficult process, ethnic politics is kind of uh, taking a second, um, second draw. Um, position now in, in, in Burundi. I, I, would, I would even say that um, it is prohibited by the constitution for political parties to be constituted only by um, members of the same um, ethnic groups. So um, this is helping a lot. And we are seeing growingly, for example, I think it's significant to say this, um, uh, the Uprona party, which is considered as a stronghold for the Tutsi minority, uh, has, um, since the signing of the Arusha Accord, its first president, um, who is a Hutu. So it, it, it's a very positive sign, showing that uh, definitely in the country, they are progressive, uh, progressively moving away from ethnic politics. Now, um, all of this is happening um, uh, only a few years, seven years, almost zero, not, not much years uh, after the end of, um, you know, the open co conflict in, um, um, in Burundi. So that's why wh whenever we, we, we talk about Burundi, um, I must say I'm a bit biased because I want to bring in an historical perspective to say that what has been done so far in so many, in so uh, few years is extraordinary. Yet many challenges remain. And one of them is definitely to advance 
their own commitment to abide by the, the rule of law, um, to promote human rights, uh, to end impunity. And a big, big, big um, 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 uh, issue remains the, um, um, the, the setting of, of the, of the uh, transitional justice mechanisms. And I must say, while the um, entire Burundian society believes in the need to revisit their history, um, because not a single family in, in, in this um, um, very small country uh, was really spared from the, uh, the horrors of, of the past. And when asked, they all want um, to revisit that history. They will be ready to, to forgive, but they, they also want um, justice. So today, the real challenge for the government, because it has the responsibility to put together the mechanisms that would help um, go through that very difficult uh, process for Burundi. But it's a process that they cannot avoid. They will have to, to face their own history and um, um, courageously agree that um, um, innocents were, 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 were killed. Um, and that those who perpetrated the, those horrors must uh, be tried. But for us, it's, it, it's not an easy thing. While in principle, no time should be further lost to ensure that the full truth is known and that um, the responsible uh, um, criminals are brought to justice. We also know for sure that in today's Burundi, and this is a, a testimony from one of the political leaders who very clearly told me, perfect, there is not a single of us Everyone who has been in power over the past few years has a responsibility of uh, the horrors that we all um, live through. So where to strike the balance between justice and, and peace? Or You are simply to agree that both should be pursued. And at the moment, what the government has, has done, um, they have sent to the parliament a draft law on the um, Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which I must say, to be fair, is not in breach of any of international standards that we know. So they have done a great job, I think, trying to strike the right balance to ensure that um, what they will be proposing to their people and to themselves and to the rest of their partners um, is something that they can stand by and, and, uh, um, and, um, 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 and, and defend. Since this is a responsibility entrusted to the, the mission uh, by the Security Council, we did send written comments as a UN, working closely with the um, um, 
the office of the High Commissioner um, for Human Rights in, in Geneva. We came together, we first said, with the, um, the office of the legal advisor, also here, OLA. We came together with a set of comments and put them before the, uh, the President of the National Assembly, the Speaker of the House. And it is our sincere hope that this comment, this, this um, um, uh, views will be um, duly considered by the Burundian side. Most importantly, what we conveyed was the need to ensure that as we look at um, um, these transitional um, mechanisms, the need for a country to, to pardon is important. And definitely as, an, as, a, as a critical aspect of the reconciliation process. But the UN also did make it very clear that um, as they consider um, granting pardon to um, among themselves, justice should not be, this should not be done at the expenses of justice. And we, 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 we do hope that um, 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 these views will be uh, considered and lead to um, a better redrafting of the law, um, which will be uh, acceptable to the Burundian themselves, but also meet all international standards. And should that happen, the UN will be absolutely ready to back uh, this important process. So, in short, Warren, um, I see Burundi today as a country that has done um, tremendous progress, but a country that is still faced by huge, huge, but not insuperable um, challenges. And I see today's Burundi as a country that would also need to receive a fair amount of support in his um, um, efforts to really um, um, escape the trap of extreme poverty. And on that third point, I, I wanted to share with you before um, we have um, you have any questions. Um, I have volunteered to be Burundi's advocate. Because the work that we are doing on the political track cannot be sustainable in a country faced with so many socioeconomic challenges. How would we, as an international community, continue to call for the respect for human rights and good governance, which are, by the way, non-negotiable. I have said time and time again that it is not about go governance against human rights. Both are vitally important, and both must be pursued. And I must say, at time, aggressively. And we're saying this because, as I have started uh, to say that I've, I've discovered an extraordinary people in Burundi. And in Burundi, you, just to give you an image, I used to say that the, the genie of democracy is out of the bottle. There is no way the Burundians that have known, have come to know, with their courage, um, their resilience, and their love for life, would agree to be led under any dictatorship anymore. And this, you see it 
in a vibrancy of their um, uh, uh, civil society, in the freedom that they enjoy of their media as nowhere around the region. And this is exactly what they are fighting to keep, to ensure that no shrieking of the political space will affect those tremendous gains. So these people deserve today that they be given this government, deserve today that they be given a chance to develop themselves. And in Geneva last year, uh, at the end of October, they were able to put together quite a showing with the full support of the international partners. Um, they crafted a vision for themselves, which attracted quite a significant amount of, of pledges. And part of our job today is to ensure that we follow through and that these commitments are made. Because, Warren, as you know, as long as um, millions of Burundis, Burundians will go uh, to bed you know, with empty stomach, there will be or the chances for peace in Burundi will be extremely thin. So this is the plea that we've been making. And yesterday uh, in the council, I went on to call on the council members to be Burundi's advocates and to ensure that beyond the traditional um, assistance that is given to any country, they receive today, as urgently as possible, a sufficient level of budgetary support. Because if the state fails, if the state cannot function anymore, we will have what we know, um, a state that is incapable of um, fulfilling its basic uh, duties. And therefore, um, we will be many very soon to talk about a failed peace consolidation experience in Burundi and a failed state. Um, with consequences that we cannot today imagine as we look at a region where uh, the situation in the eastern part of, of, of the DRC remains extremely volatile. Uh, Warren, I think I will stop here and be absolutely happy to take any questions. Sure, I'm going to just keep you going a bit with a couple of questions of my own. Let me just pick up the point you mentioned at the very end about the instability in uh, the eastern Congo. And um, I want to ask you about, uh, about security sector reform, both the police and about the army, because I know there are still cross-border incursions. Um, is that something the UN is involved with, and how is that going? In other words, the increasing making, making the security sector um, stronger and also more credible to the citizens of Burundi? Um. Yes, um, we, we are absolutely involved in, in SSR in, in Burundi. And um, we're doing it in close um, cooperation with um, uh, key countries. I will not be mentioning them. But uh, this is an area, indeed, where um, greater progress is, is required. Um, but first, I think um, we should say that the, the, the stability that the Burundi is enjoying today results ex ex exactly from a very successful um, uh, SSR, at least as, par as far as the army um, was concerned. Um, the fact that the former um, army um, was, um, the, the former rebels were properly integrated into the army and that they got the, the right training and that they're still um, in that process of professionalization and which is quite successful in Burundi has helped to keep the country together. Unfortunately, and, and your, your point is absolutely right, um, the police was not, did not receive the same level of treatment, uh, hasn't yet received the same level of treatment. 
And this is where we, we are being witnessing um, 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 quite some, 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 some difficulties uh, with uh, uh, the respect of, um, of uh, um, uh, human rights and, and where a number of, of, of uh, related crimes uh, are being reported on. Uh, but we remain absolutely engaged in, in, in working closely with, uh, with the, the Burundian authorities to ensure that SSR um, um, is, is carried um, 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 uh, out you know, in, in, in a much more con um, 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 consistent um, and, and uh, successful manner. Uh, you, the DRC, no. sorry. No, 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 go ahead. No, I was going to ask another question, but continue on if you had more to say. No, no, no. <laughs> I want to ask you, uh, your, your stress on, on the poverty in uh, Burundi, even though it's made some strides, it still is one of the poorest countries in the world. Um, they have been operating with what we call in UN speak a PRSP2, a poverty reduction strategy paper. And uh, this meeting in Geneva, I think, was done under that rubric to try to benefit it. Um, uh, another thing I want to ask you about under the same rubric is, I saw a, a um, statistic that said that 93% of the population in Burundi is involved in agriculture, yet the country still suffers from food insecurity. So I wanted to ask you just generally, do you see a way to make a cut into this poverty? That's what the the paper suggests Burundi ought to do. Are they taking active steps to, um, to reduce the poverty that you, I think, very correctly have said is a real, um, is really holding them back? Yeah. No, um, you, you, you're absolutely right, Warren. Um, we have been um, working, and when I say we, is beyond Benube. Um, treating malnutrition in Burundi is a core objective of the entire um, UN country team um, in Burundi. And as we speak, both WFP, uh, the, World Food, uh, the World Food Program, uh, WFP, uh, FAO, um, and uh, WHO are uh, working um, as a team to bring together a, series, a, a, number, a number of programs, including school feeding, you know, to, uh, to ensure that um, we offer um, a, a significant response to the, to the uh, very uh, 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 core problem of malnutrition in Burundi. But this is not enough, and, and that's why part of the uh, PRSP2 indeed involves um, modernizing Burundi's uh, agriculture and making it, you know, uh, a, a much more productive uh, sector so that it would free, um, you know, the majority of Burundians from um, um, a, a very, uh, um, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, the traditional way of, 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 of producing food they have uh, uh, they engage in, uh, in, in so far. And, 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 and therefore, um, we hope that with the kind of um, um, commitments made by the partners um, at the Geneva Conference, um, 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 you know, uh, resources will be delivered and dedicated to this task. But indeed, today, um, the prospect is, is, remains pretty, pretty worrisome. Uh, Parfait, another thing that's drawn attention internationally to Burundi in recent years is the problem of extrajudicial and politically motivated killings. Now, uh, there's certain progress there. There was 61 in 2011, uh, only 30 last year. Um, but is impunity still a continuing problem, or is Burundi and is the UN helping Burundi to make a cut in that and to uh, bring uh, an end to that practice? Mm. Well, Warren, as you, you, you already mentioned it, um, the SG's report um, makes the case that um, um, welcoming the diminution of the number of extrajudicial killings in uh, in, in, in Burundi and overall uh, expressing appreciation to the fact that um, uh, the country's human, uh, human rights uh, record uh, performance is, is also uh, improving. Um, I think one has to go and, and, um, and, and understand and, and see that there are um, structural 
uh, issues here that really um, um, not justify, but may explain um, why we're still seeing um, the level of violence um, that, uh, that we see in Burundi. And by the way, when we talk about exaggeration killings here, it must be clear for everyone that what the UN is saying is not that 61 people uh, were uh, murdered um, at, the, at the behest of the government. It's not what we're saying. We are not saying that they were um, uh, directed, uh, criminals were directed to um, 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 kill other Burundians um, uh, through a specific order of the government. What we're saying is, um, um, and we have been discussing these issues with the government, and I, I must say to their credit that they are not amused by this. Mm -hmm. I think they are not pleased to be labeled as a country where exaggeration killings are, are committed. And, and that's why you, you might have heard yesterday the permanent secretary um, welcoming the fact that uh, um, progress on, on human rights was um, uh, mentioned in the, in the SG's report and finding the report a balanced report, which means what? It means that they do acknowledge that they still have a problem. Um, how to go about it is definitely uh, a matter for the country to, uh, to address. We have been providing and restricted uh, support to the ministry in charge of human rights, um, whom, by the way, yesterday was before the Human Rights Council presenting Burundi's um, universal peer review um, on, on human rights. So I would say um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm rather hopeful that um, um, uh, today's Burundian uh, leadership understands uh, that um, they need to come clean. They need to address the issue of, of human rights. And it's um, our, our hope that um, through um, the concerted um, effort of all, um, Burundi will turn its back to um, the kind of uh, violations that we're seeing today. The last thing I want to ask you about is something else unpleasant, but something Burundi has been known for, and I want to ask you what progress is being made to put an end to, and that, of course, is corruption. I know there is a group called the Anti-Corruption Brigade. That's pretty dramatic sounding, mm. but are they making real inroads um, into easing corruption in Burundi? Um, yeah, I, I, I think, I, I think it's, it's fair to say that it's, there is no secret about it. It's a matter that is spoken uh, quite openly in Burundi. They have, um, the civil society is extremely uh, engaged in the fight uh, against corruption. Um, as I said yesterday, um, uh, the, we, we, we should um, um, acknowledge um, the fact that there is, at least at the policy level, a clear commitment of the government of Burundi. The president himself has declared this uh, zero tolerance policy to fight corruption. They do recognize that this is um, a problem they will have to deal with for um, a, longer, a longer period. Uh, um, but um, you might have seen also um, some of the, um, the, the classification, global and regional classification of Burundi, um, appreciating efforts made by the country, uh, both by Business International and Transparency International, doing business and Transparency International. Mm -hmm. and they, have, they did recognize that uh, significant progress was being made in Burundi. And uh, this is, by the way, um, an area where the country is extremely, extremely engaged and extremely concerned because um, partners will be looking at how they perform in fighting corruption uh, should they be given any any assistance? So those partners who were in Geneva, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to get some questions and comments from the floor. If any are uh, here in the, about, about the third row there, uh, and then we'll come to you. Uh, wait, wait for the um, microphone because we're webcasting this, so I wanted to make sure you were yes, heard. Yes, it's Rhonda Haubin, and I'm Die Tageszeitung, um, an online um, column. And my question is um, about netizens in Burundi. What is the level of 
internet access because you speak mm. of opposition and, and government and you speak of journalists and of NGOs, but somehow the internet can make possible a much broader discussion, mm. which is I, so, can be helpful mm. in these problems. So I'm wondering, is what is the level now, and is this part of the plan for what you're looking forward to? Yeah. Thank you. Um, sh should I? Yeah. 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 We'll just. Well. As I, 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 I just mentioned, I think um, um, for any country today, not providing internet access to your population is definitely, um, um, you know, it, 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 it's not sustainable. And uh, internet has become so closely intertwined with everything we do. Um, and even for the country's own development, I think they need to have internet access. and. Uh, but here, it's rather a kind of structural issue, uh, the poor infrastructure that the country um, uh, has been having over the past, uh, you know, a uh, few, few, few decades. Um, 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 they don't make it possible for the population to have internet access. I mean, when you talk about the population, the majority of the population, there is internet, of course. And at the moment, as we speak, there is a major prog uh, project going um, on in the country to wire the entire country with fiber uh, optics. So it's, it's a major project as you go to, if you go today to, to Bujumbura, you'll see in the roads, uh, uh, you know, the trenches all over the city, all over the country, uh, trying to connect, you know, to uh, uh, build this uh, uh, um, um, in internet network. And, and I believe in a few years, it's a, it's a matter of, uh, of maybe the end of this year, um, this project will be completed and uh, you have high speed internet in Burundi, uh, which is going to be great. And uh, for the time being, even us as a UN, we, we have to put up with uh, a very slow, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, internet, uh, and which is not uh, convenient all the time. Yeah, sorry. Uh, thank you. Fred, my name is Ella Hotobo, director of the Peace Building Support Office. I have a two part question for you. Mm. The first part relates to um, Agatha Rawasa. In your presentation, mm -hmm. you made no reference to him, but how significant mm -hmm. is his continuing absence in the country for mm -hmm. lack of coherence among the opposition and the possibility of what you would call um, um, significant reconciliation between the government and opposition? The second one mm -hmm. um, is the comment that was made by your immediate past predecessor, who, who uh, as Warren Hugg remarked, was here in July, mm. uh, Karen Langridge. She remarked in, in response to a question by someone, by one of the journalists regarding PBC, mm. that the forthcoming uh, pledging conference, which has not taken place, will be a test of how much support PBC can garner for mm. Burundi's PRSP. Now, in the light of the results of Geneva on 20, 29th and 30th of October, how will you rate the PBC support, both wow for you and for the PRSP. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, um, um, my brother, for, 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 this, um, for this question. And uh, I must first of all apologize that in my rather lengthy initial comments, uh, I, I, and even mentioning the conference in Geneva, I did not establish the link with and the role of the PBC in, in making this uh, um, uh, this conference, the success it is today. And let me correct that because I was clear yesterday at the council. I, I made it very clear that um, in today's configuration, our work as Benube cannot succeed. I, I insist, I put emphasis of, on, on not uh, fully um, if we are not working in partnership with the PBC. I think as someone who was at the beginning, and I see Shamina also in the room, you know, as someone who, who um, was involved in the design and establishment of the, of the PBC from the uh, member state uh, side, um, where a lot of doubts were casted over the relevance of this body, and today uh, it is, uh, some may still have questions in view of the failed experience, you know, in some of the country configuration um, cases. I, I must say, um, I'm deeply pleased and really impressed to see how the PBC is 
um, as far as Burundi is concerned, and this is a uh, full credit goes to Ambassador Paul Zeger, I must say, and of course to your office, the PBSO, and Jody, yourself, uh, Madi Otobo, and colleagues, as you Vincent, I mean, uh, it, it's amazing to see what um, the Geneva Conference became a real success simply because of, of the concerted effort by both the PBC um, configuration, the PBSO, uh, us on the ground as the Benub, and other, the, the entire U, uh, UN, UN family, and it went even beyond by involving the World Bank and uh, all the partners. But this convening power of, uh, of, of the PBC and Paul's advocacy has made it possible to really make uh, what we saw in Geneva the true success that, that we witnessed. And, and, and um, frankly, this is to be continued. And I believe if, to, if, if we were having doubts about the relevance of the PBC uh, today, I think in the council and, um, and, and in the country that I'm coming from, uh, Paul was in Burundi just uh, uh, a, a week ago, and he received a um, um, you know, star kind of a, he uh, was a big star. He was received by all the, the leadership there in appreciation, you know, to uh, the, the, the extraordinary job uh, that the PBC did. So again, um, sorry, and and uh, and um, and I hope this 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 correct thing. And and if uh, um, 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 we 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 can consider the statement delivered yesterday uh, in the council as the official recognition of this uh, uh, extraordinary. Um, 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 and the relevance of the, the, the work um, uh, and the relationship between the, uh, the, PBC, the PBC and uh, field uh, missions, um, I, I, think, um, I think this needs to be stated. Uh, coming back to your first question, first question <laughs> um, I think I can candidly say here uh, um, that um, 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 you, you, might be, you might be aware of the recent uh, development within the FNL, um, ROASA, um, um, where we learned just um, 10 days ago that um, it's been um, 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 let's say that uh, there's been a, 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 a coup uh, within the FNL, mm -hmm. and um, and the new leadership, as uh, I don't know if it's, I must say, self-appointed itself or, or or simply uh, cropped up, um, suggesting that Mr. Rwasa was not anymore the uh, true head of the FNL, and I I, I had a, a conversation with. Uh, um, uh, the political leadership in the government in, in Burundi and ask what were the views um, on um, and, and the reading of this, uh, this development. And their feedback was pretty clear. They say there may be many names claiming leadership of the FNL, but the true and um, real leader, and this, is, this was coming from the government side, the, the own appreciation, remains Mr. Ruasa. Should he decide to go back to uh, Burundi, he will be definitely the person around with whom um, the followers, the people, those who are from the FNL will, will go. And therefore, he remains a force to, to count with in, in Burundi's political uh, landscape. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Kate Hunt, just wait for the microphone, please. And you can finish your cookie. Please. <laughs> Thank you, hi. I'm Kate Hunt, the UN representative for CARE International. And um, Parfait, if I could pick up on the, the strand connected to peace building and post-conflict stability and all the other elements, poverty reduction, et cetera. Something that's on all of our minds right now with the coming of the Commission on the Status of Women and its theme this year of violence against women. Mm. We know there was certainly violence during the mm. 
violence, uh, women, violence against women during the armed conflict. Mm. And I'm wondering if you could give us a quick update on the state of play on violence against women in Burundi. Mm -hmm. um, how big a problem it is, mm -hmm. what sorts of remedies and programs are, mm -hmm. are being uh, effective, if at all, um, would be, I think would be really interesting and timely. Thanks. Excellent. Well, uh, Kate, um, thank you for your question. And, um, and um, I must say, um, I do, I do agree with you that um, violence against women remains um, a serious problem also in, in Burundi. And, and I, I was very, very humbled and, and pleased to, to, to see that one of my first uh, field um, activities um, in Burundi was um, in connection, in relation to um, 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 all the work around um, 1325 um, and, and efforts being um, um, led by the uh, relevant authorities in Burundi, uh, relevant uh, civil society associations um, uh, in Burundi um, in addressing the issue of uh, uh, the scourge of, of really uh, violence against women. Um, and, and I was really touched to see how ordinary um, uh, women in Burundi were talking with such uh, deep wisdom and clear understanding of the, um, the plight, really, of violence that has affected these ladies for so uh, many years. And, and um, most of them came to me um, and asked, uh, what could the UN do to ensure that we have, you know, um, they went you know, to ask questions about forensic, for example. They asked us whether we, we can provide, you know, forensic, you know, uh, capability so that, you know, those perpetrators of crimes can be found and brought to justice. These were ordinary women, and they were not talking to me in French. They were talking in Kirundi, and this was being translated um, to me. Uh, just to, to see uh, and to show how deep and how um, concerned uh, these women in Burundi are. And um, I, I have to say that the kind of response that um, I'm seeing um, um, as, as kind of um, as, as is, is um, giving me hope. Um, in Burundi, uh, I think it's an initiative that is taking place within the Eastern um, African um, economic community. Um, um, they will be all, uh, establishing a forum um, Forum des Femmes. I don't know exact. I don't remember exactly the the title of that uh, that um, um, initiative. Um, but to ensure that women take full leadership of issues that are affecting them, and within that body, which will be um, um, empowered to report directly to the government and directly to the parliament. They will have, uh, they can, uh, once this body is, is set up, they will be able to, uh, s uh, to um, uh, um, have hearings with parliamentarians, with government members, um, uh, cabinet members, to discuss all um, 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 aspects related to um, uh, issues of either of violence, of social empowerment, of all of, of, of leadership, everything that is really of concern and affecting women in Burundi. And I was very pleased to see that, and maybe, uh, uh, Sophia, when we go back, uh, let us revisit uh, progress on this uh, specific uh, uh, area. And uh, the minister who is championing this initiative will be coming here, indeed, um, to discuss this with uh, um, other uh, member states here in New York. But, um, it, it remains a, an area where we um, um, further effort will be required um, in the broader context of um, fighting impunity uh, in Burundi. Thank you. 
uh, in the second row here. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, uh, Parfait. I'm Luca Nicola from the Mission of Switzerland. I work uh, with Ambassador Seger, who is the chair of the Peace Building Commission. Um, thank you for so much, of, I mean, for these very kind words <laughs> towards the PBC. Um, I remember actually the meeting, you know, a couple of months ago with Landgren, so that was, a, that was another climate. Um, you were saying that our work can't be done, you know, uh, without, or your work can't be done without the PBC. I think it's quite to the contrary. I think <laughs> our work can't be done with your presence uh, in the field. And that leads me also uh, to my question uh, of, the, of your mandate, the mandate of BNOB. Uh, we all know that the government has sent this not verbal, saying that they would like a transition in a year's time into a country team. Um, so I wanted to ask you, this is of course one year before a crucial, you know, a crucial step, which would be the elections in 2015. So I wanted to ask you, how do you see, you know, that issue of, B, of the BNUB mandate evolving, also in light of what has been said yesterday uh, in the council by the, by the permanent secretary of, uh, of Burundi? Thank you so much, Bafé. Hold that thought for a second. There's another question I want to make sure she gets recognized, please, and then we can answer both at once. Thanks. Thank you so much for your very insightful reflections, uh, Mr. Nyanga. My name is Evelyn Roymans. I work with Oxfam. Um, I have two questions, one uh, on the um, TCR, on the Tutor mm. Record. TRC, Truth and Reconciliation Committee. Um, there have been several drafts and they have not necessarily improved in terms of um, international standards. Um, one of the things that have been that is not figuring in the last draft is a reference to criminal prosecution mm -hmm. has been fully taken out. Um, would the UN see themselves in a position to to give out a public statement, for example, to stress what type of guarantees there, there would be? Um, if not, how would you see um, tackling this issue? Um, that's one thing. And then another one is concerns the um, commission of land and, um, yeah, I don't know the translation, I'm sorry, in English, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Um, there have been, civil society has been voicing concerns lately uh, on um, some, um, advantages or um, judgments being given to the advantage of people returning from Tanzania mm -hmm. uh, to the expense of uh, people that stayed behind. And this might actually well be getting a, an act, a, a new ethnic mm -hmm. um, dimension again. Mm -hmm. And whilst I agree with you that at a, at a moment this has taken a, like a secondary position, uh, mm -hmm. secondary. Um, issue, the, the ethnic dimension, we also should recognize that it can flare up again and we should take all precautions, I think, um, mm. to not make that happen. And I would appreciate your thoughts on this. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Warren. Mandate. Uh, Luca, um, thank you for, for your kind words too and for um, raising this, uh, this um, important um, issue. Um, well, uh, this will not be the first time uh, the issue of mandates um, is, is discussed or raised by a host country. And, and I believe um, um, it is um, um, it's totally fair um, for um, a government to um, reassess um, from time to time, the nature of the UN engagement um, in their country. Um, and I, I want to make it very, very clear that the UN is not in Burundi to stay forever. <laughs> I think if, if we were to be there forever, we would have failed our task. Um, I, I, I think, but you're absolutely right, the issue is a, a matter of timing. Uh, is, it the, 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 is the time ripe for uh, this um, disengagement or let's say this transfer of responsibilities from Benue to a regular country team, it's, it's a matter for the council to, to, to review and to discuss uh, with the government of, of Burundi upon the advice of the Secretary General. At the moment, 
uh, based on the, the SG's assessment of the benchmarks, which the Council adopted in 2012, last, last year in, in July. Um, the SG's um, recommendation to the Council was to say um, an additional one year uh, would be required uh, to help make further progress in uh, implementing the, the, the benchmarks um, um, as, as we know them, the eight benchmarks. Um, but, 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 but of course the SG uh, did take into account the, the not verbal, the sent by the, by the government expressing the, 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 the wish to see this term as the last one. Uh, and although it's a bit technical, but uh, what we do in those circumstances, or in the, the SG will be sending a, a strategic assess, assessment mission um, to, to Burundi, um, and which will later on advise him on, on recommendations on the way forward. But what I heard yesterday from council members is a note of caution. They say, and they fully respect the fact that uh, the council, even the council, cannot impose itself um, on, on, onto a member state. Uh, they are extremely careful. However, some and many member states in the council have said that we as a UN, we, we went to Burundi for a specific reason. Because of the reason that we have um, um, mention um, uh, flag, you know, just um, quickly at, at the beginning of, of um, um, this, this conversation. And the Council believes today that those reasons, um, um, while some have been um, advanced and, and, and achieved, in some other core ones, there is still a need to remain engaged. That's the first reason based on the existing benchmarks. The second reason that the Council um, members um, discussed yesterday was the notion that Burundi cannot be um, seen in isolation. It is part of a very volatile, as we said before, mm -hmm. region. And the, the incursions that you mentioned, um, Warren, and the clashes that we have seen uh, only for 2012, around 40, um, are an indication of a, um, a stable, but rather with some degree of, of fragility that if they are not properly managed, may um, unravel and lead to some serious, more serious um, situations. And the third element is the fact that um, at the end of the next mandate, that is uh, the end of 2013, so it will be in February 2014, Burundi will be only one year before its most important, its latest test, that is the 2015 general elections. And it was the considered view of council members at this juncture that it might not be um, the right thing to do to disengage um, fully now. Of course, all of this will be um, further discussed by council members, and um, I'm sure in their wisdom and, and um, the, um, what I can say for uh, the government of Burundi, they have made it clear also that they will not be taking any unilateral approach to this matter. They will rather um, discuss and see with the council um, and they look, everybody is looking forward to the strategic assessment mission to see what the findings would be to further advise the SG. Mm -hmm. Now, on the, on the TRC, uh, whether we'll be able to make a public statement is something to be seen. <laughs> we, we try to limit our uh, public pronouncement on matters of, that really uh, um, 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 uh, belong to, to state uh, members. But um, our views are known, and we have already uh, communicated to the, 
um, relevant authorities in Burundi, both the government and uh, and, uh, and and the parliament, uh, the the concerns of the United Nations, and um, we do hope indeed um, that through this interaction, um, um, the government, I mean, let's say the yeah, government of Burundi, will um, see a wisdom. In, um, in the comments that you have made. And those comments were not made um, out of the blue. They were based on consultations that we and the government of Burundi uh, led in 2009, um, which really called for the elements that we have uh, reminded, uh, we have submitted to the government um, in, the, in the comments that were put before the, the, the Speaker of the House. And, and, and we hope um, um, that in, um, in doing so, um, the, the, the Burundians will, will uh, uh, definitely uh, uh, put together a TRC uh, that can really gain um, trust and confidence and also support from, from their partners. And I must say, um, uh, again, to their credit, our initial assessment was that the draft, even as it stands now, is not against international standards. But it needs improvement, and those are improvement of a very critical nature, um, which if they were not included, would definitely um, provide for a, um, a less um, comprehensive uh, package. The CNTB, <clears throat> and that will be the last point, uh, la Commission Nationale Terre et Bien, was um, um, one of the other mechanisms that um, were agreed upon at the Arusha uh, negotiations. It is about, um, it's also addressing the issue of justice. A short uh, background to it. Um, during the uh, events of 1972, where um, these failed insurrections led to the um, um, uh, uh, violence and, and, uh, and, and massacres that, that occurred at, at that time, a number of uh, uh, people, mainly from the Hutu community, left the country uh, by um, uh, really uh, huge numbers and, and, uh, and um, um, became refugees in uh, most of the surrounding countries and mainly in Tanzania. Um, now that most of them and the last group returned um, only um, uh, last year, two, two, two months ago, the process was completed in December. Uh, Sophia, am I, right, am I right? In December. Um, uh, they, they are coming back, and they want to be um, given back their, 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 their property. They're claiming their land. They're claiming their, their properties. And um, it happens that for 30, 40 years, those properties were occupied by new owners. And to the credit of, of, of those who are the current owners, it is, it is sad and unfortunate to, to say that um, um, they will be paying the price of bad governance, bad laws put together by the former regimes, um, which made it easier for them to acquire those properties, knowing that these were not belonging to them. So when we ask the question of, um, of what to do with those who today will be losing those lands and properties, we should always keep in mind and, and share the burden of those who for 40 years was left with nothing else but, you know, their whatever nothing. So it's a deep issue in Burundi, and I do agree with you that it has the potential, if it's not managed properly, it has the potential to lead to further conflict in the country. 
We have been making appeals quietly, but we do understand that the need for justice um, should also take into account um, the uh, major concern for keeping the country together. Therefore, having an approach that is balanced, looking at reconciliation, and ensuring that those who became owners improperly, maybe, of these properties um, are also um, compensated one way or the other. And it seems to me that uh, this is an issue that is also on the table. Um, 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 some discussions are taking place to put together a compensation fund to ensure that uh, um, those who may be losing today those um, properties will also be compensated so that we keep the country together. Thank you. There is one last question. If you could make it very short. We only have two minutes. Uh, the gentleman here, just wait for the uh, and I will have a, a, a short answer. Okay. Th th thank you so much uh, for your enriching Just exposure. Just a little bit. Tom Adala from the Kenya Mission, and we are members of the Burundi Configuration. Mm. Uh, mine is just a bit on the East, a role of the East African community. And uh, we've seen the Burundi playing a major role in terms of troop contribution in AMISOM. Absolutely. And yet it also has major challenges to consolidate peace and security. Mm -hmm. It's also the headquarters of the International Great Lakes uh, Center. Uh, uh, to what extent would you say this has helped Burundi consolidate peace? And what are your expectations of the region in terms of the ESC in assisting Burundi go to the next level? Thank you. Mm. Regional integration is, um, is part and parcel of our mandate. And um, um, I'm pleased to say that um, through our um, um, support to, to Burundi, um, um, the country has, has, is growing to become um, um, an important player within the uh, East African community. Um, and, and this is Burundi's natural kind of uh, um, home. Um, uh, because as you know, Burundi is also part of the ECAS, the Central African Community, which is a wider entity. But um, its real, um, uh, um, let's say, uh, uh, place and uh, where it has the greatest interest is definitely within the ESC. And we can see that uh, um, 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 they are becoming more and more um, a player in the region. One of the issues that Burundi may face, um, and they are already uh, aggressively uh, tackling it, is the uh, language issue. And Burundi being a Francophone and Kirundi-based country, um, they have now decided to join the, um, um, the Commonwealth, and English has become also uh, the second um, after French official language. So once they overcome you know, the kind of language bar barrier, um, I think they will, they will become definitely uh, a major player um, in the region, knowing that they're going from a very weak position uh, as, as, as compared to Rwanda, Kenya, and, and all, the, uh, all the key, uh, Uganda, all the key uh, uh, Eastern African uh, community members. But definitely, this is their place, the natural place, and they're doing everything they can to become an active member. And, and two years ago, they, uh, they, last year, they were the chair. They were in the chair of the ESC, which they, they, they led uh, uh, quite uh, 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 impressively well. Um, and and on, on troops, um, this is um, be becoming um, a, a, real, a real trademark for, for, for Burundi. And uh, uh, we said it yesterday at, at the council again uh, to see, this is the good news coming from Burundi. Uh, Burundi's um, um, uh, leadership and, and eagerness to give back to the community of nations through its, um, its troops, through its peacekeeping um, uh, forces, um, both to the AU uh, to, uh, and to the UN, is a tremendous asset today for the international community. Look at the work they did in Somalia. It's fantastic. They have paid the highest cost, human cost, um, in, in, uh, through their the forces uh, to stabilize, to contribute in, in, um, uh, to the stabilization of, 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 uh, of, of Somalia. So moving forward, 
I, I, will, I can continue to see this as a major both uh, peacekeeping but also diplomatic card for Burundi to play in the future. Parfait, it's been great to have you back. Given our interest here in Burundi, particularly in these critical two years that for all the reasons you have said uh, are about to happen, uh, I am sure we will want you to come back and speak to us again. Thank you for coming this time so early into your, uh, your mandate there. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.